Good evening, my audience. You're welcome to Dr. Fred Academy. Uh, today we shall be looking at the body regions of the dog, that is the canine species. We'll be starting from the head region, down to the neck region, to the trunk, the forelimb, and then the hind limb. So we start this way. On the head region, we have the planum nasale. This is the planum nasale. Okay, on this plumum nacelle, on the most restral aspect of it, we have a slight line, a slight depression, which divides the nasal plate into two. Now, this line is called the philtrum. The philtrum. Okay, this is the nares. Okay, the nostrils. The nostrils is here, so it's a nares. On this side we have the nasal region the nasal region that is the region that overlies the nasal bone it's called the nasal region this point is called the stop or glabella the stop or glabella this is the facial region the facial region and this is the cranium the cranium the part that covers the brain is the cranium or the cranial region. The part that overlies the eyes is called the ocular region. This is the ocular region. The part that surrounds the lips is called the labial region. This is the labial region. It surrounds the lips on both sides. Now, on both sides of the mouth or the oral cavity, are two angles this is the first one the one on the right the other one is also on the left and these angles are called the oral commissures the commissures of the oral cavity okay this is the boca region the area of the cheek the area of the cheek is the boca region this is the masseta region the masseta region, the area that overlies the masseta muscle is called the masseta region. The area around the ear is called the auricular region. The auricular region. Now, down here, just where we have the, the, the lymph node, the parotid lymph node, is the parotid area or the parotid region this region overlies or covers the parotid salivary glands coming down to this point on the ventral aspect of the head region we have the mandibular region the mandibular region okay the mandibular region now the mandible has the left and the right parts this is the right part and we have the left part here on the other side of the animal and then between the two Horizontal rami of the mandible is the intermandibular space. Okay, so the mandible is here, the mandible is here, and then this is the intermandibular space. The intermandibular space. Okay, now let's go to the neck region. The neck region is divided into three major parts. We have the dorsal neck region, we have the lateral neck region, and we have the ventral neck region. Okay. Now, coming to the ventral neck region, starting from the point that overlies the laryngeal cartilages or the larynx, is called the laryngeal region. The laryngeal region. It actually overlies the larynx. Okay? And then from the larynx down to this point is the tracheal region. The tracheal region. The tracheal region. At this point okay let's look at the trunk on the trunk first of all we have here the withers the withers is the region between the two scapula okay we have the right scapula we have the left scapula so the region that is in between the two of them it is also called the interscapular space okay so that space is called the withers Okay, now this is the dosum. The dosum. The dosum is the area 
that overlies uh, the thoracic vertebrae, okay? This is the dosum, okay? So the dosum can be of this length in this animal, okay? The dosum, while from this point down to this point is a paralumbar area, okay? This point to this point again is the paralumbar area, while from here, from the paralumbar area downwards to the tail is the sacral region the sacral region okay at this point of the tail is the supracoda the junction the immediate junction between the sacral region and the coda and the tail the tail this is called the coda region coda region so the junction between the sacral region and the coda region is called the supracoda so we can assume it to be the beginning of the tail that's the supracoda region Okay, this is the coastal region. It is a region that overlies the ribs. The region that overlies the ribs is the coastal region. So, from this point down to this point is the coastal region. All right, and then at this point, there's a triangular space. At this point, it is called the paralumbar fossa, or you call it the flank. Is a triangular area. It is a paralumbar fossa or the flank. Okay. At the ventral region of the trunk, from this point, we have the pre-sternal region. Just the region before the sternum is the pre-sternal region. The pre-sternal region. Okay. And then the whole of this. Down to this point is a sternal region. Okay? This is a sternal region. This is a sternal region. And then at the end of the sternum, at this point, we have the xiphoid region. The xiphoid region. Of course, you know that in the skeleton, at the end of the xiphoid, at the end of the sternum, the muscular aspect of the sternum is covered by the xiphoid cartilage. So that is where the name xiphoid region is derived from. Why this is a ventral abdominal region. Okay? These are the mammary region. Mammary region. Okay? Is a region that carries or that bears the mammary glands. Okay. Now let's look at the region of the forelimb. The region of the forelimb. The region of the forelimb starts from this point. Okay, it starts from this point. That is the region of the scapula. So this is the scapular region because the scapula appears this way in this animal. Okay, it appears as a triangular shaped muscle. So it is this way. Okay, so this is a scapular region. Okay, and then this is the humeral region. Humeral region or the brachial, the brachial region. That is the region of the brachium. The region of the brachium. So between the region of the brachium and the region of the scapula, we have the shoulder region. The joint formed at this point is actually the scapulohumeral joint. Of course, the name implies that it's the joint formed between the scapula and the humerus. And that forms the shoulder region. So this is the shoulder region. After the humeral region, we have the elbow region or the cubital region. It is the region between the humerus and the radius and ulna. So this is the elbow region or cubital region. Okay. The next region we have as we go further distally is the radio ulna region. Okay. The radius and the honor. So the radius is this way, the honor is this way. This projection you are seeing here is the olecranon process. Okay? So you can also call this point as the olecranon region, the point of elbow. That is the olecranon region. So this is a radio honor region or the region of the what? Antebrachium. From this point to this point is the region of the what? Antebrachium. 
or radio owner region. This is the Kappa region, the region of the Kapus, all right? The Kappa region at this point, okay? That is it. That's the Kappa region, okay? Now, this is the Meta Kappa region, the Meta Kappa region from here to this point, okay? From here to this point is the Meta Kappa region. And then this, from here down, is the digital region or phalangeal region. From here to this point is the phalangeal region. Now, you should also take note that from the Kappa region to the Metakappa region and then to the phalangeal region, these three regions make up the manus. These three regions make up the manus. So from here to here is the region of the manus. The region of the what? Manus. Let's look at the hind limb region. The region of the what? Hind limb. We'll start from this point. Okay? This is the gluteal region. The gluteal region. The gluteal region is actually the region that overlies the gluteal muscles. Of course, you know we have the superficial gluteal, the middle gluteal, and the deep gluteal muscles. So this region overlies the gluteal muscles. It's called the gluteal region. Okay. This is the region of the os cause of the uh, tuber coxae, sorry. The region of the tuber coxae, that is the point of hip. The point of hip. Okay, it is the most uh, prominent region on the hip bone in the skeleton. So this is the point of hip. This is the, the thigh region. This is the region of the thigh. The region of the thigh. Okay? The region of the thigh. So here you have the bone called femur. So it is called also the femoral region. All right? Here we have, after the femoral region or thigh region, you have the tibia region. Tibia region. At this point, you have the tibia and the fibula. So we have the tibio fibula region. Okay, you can call it the tibia region or the tibio fibula region. Now, the junction between this tibia region and the femoral region is the knee. The knee. So, this is the knee region. Okay, or stifle region. The knee region, or what? The stifle region. At the cranial aspect of the stifle region, we have the patella region. Patella region. Why on the caudal aspect of the knee region or stifled region, we have the popliteal region? Because that is where the popliteal lymph node is. Next is the tarsal region. This is the tarsal region. The tarsal region, that is the region that overlies the tarsal bones. The tarsal region. The next one is the metatarsal region. Okay, the metatarsal region. And then finally we have the digital region or phalangeal region. The digital region or phalangeal region. You should also take note that the, from the region of the tarsa, tarsus, the, from the region of the tarsus, the metatarsus, and the digits, that whole three regions is commonly referred to as the pairs. The pes. So the pes is made up of the tarsa region or the tarsus, the metatarsus, and the phalanges. Thanks for listening to this video. And I will advise you, as usual, to subscribe to this channel, Dr. Fred Academy, if you have not done so. And do well to click on the notification item icon when you do so. Don't forget to share.